It's summer morning with your loving Sweet summer rising all in blue I have such sweet, sweet feelings As I wrap myself around you There are sweet memories being born in this room Outside the sunshine warms the cool grass The rose petals drip with all the dew I hear the twitter of the bird songs As they echo in the garden And I lose myself in kisses shed with you My heart is singing like the ringing of a bell's chime The world has changed with everything we do It's a day that only happens once a lifetime The day after the night when I met you My body laughs under your hands And you will always be my sweet intoxication A cooling drink on my life's desert sand Responsibilities. I had my son and my boarders. I had to pay the rent. And I also had to finish my studies. All that real life that I was trying to escape that first night on the bike. It's all real, of course. And even dreams, we can make them come true. But the real truth? That mean old hard drive that was in my head. Are you out of your mind? You can't go down there. Well, he doesn't want to see you. Don't be ridiculous. Just stay where you are. So I kept in my place. I kept my feelings inside. But I thought about Sue and how good he was to me and how he included me in everything. Well, he even included my son a lot of times. Took us both out to dinner at the Underground Railroad one time. Oh, yeah. yeah, remember that place? Yeah. And also took us to dinner at, at Bourbon Street. Couldn't get a babysitter that night. Later on in the evening, Zoot was up on stage joking with the audience because he looked out and he saw Chris with his head practically in his spaghetti because it was late for an eight-year-old. <laughs> Zoot said, somebody wake that kid up. I also saw Zoot with the audience at Bourbon Street. You know how audiences are. They like to talk to the artists sometimes. One guy came up. Talking and talking and talking. I thought he would never stop. But Zoo, he was just the soul of graciousness. He just kept listening, listening. And then he finally said, Excuse me, I don't need to be rude, but I have to go and talk to somebody. Well, I couldn't believe that because I'd been to Bourbon Street before that and I'd seen other performers there, one in particular. You know, when somebody can make you feel like they're just doing this, just totally dismissive and horrible. I never forgot that. But Sue was not like that. He was very kind, very generous. More than generous with me. He forgave all those hippie habits. Like that time we went out for dinner at La Scala, and I had the camisole that was falling apart and my, my long black skirt, very elegant. But it was winter. On my feet, <laughs> Kodiak construction boots. <laughs> Of course, Sue had never seen a woman dressed like that. <laughs> he just shook his head and smiled. And he forgave my, my feminist stance against shaving legs. 
what's that? He said, the first time he saw me, like, he said, it's hair. <laughs> he just laughed. And he was also very generous with young musicians, unlike a lot of artists who think, if it's not what they're doing, it's not real music. I said to him one time, you're so good to me, you give me so much, and I don't really have anything that I can give you in return. Well, Zoot answered very simply, very honestly and sincerely. And his answer did more for me than any therapy or any religion ever could. He said, you give me a body. But he said it in a way that was honoring that giving, very respectfully, very gentlemanly. And so unlike the attitudes of the times, because it was the years after the 60s. You remember the sexual revolution? Everybody was sleeping with everybody else, and nobody really knew what love was. Now, I could enjoy sex, because to me, sex was a very natural and beautiful gift that was there for everybody to enjoy. But I kept myself quite separate. My real self was totally disconnected from this body and the person that everybody else saw. Because the person that I saw, in my mind, was just never good enough and, and always somehow wrong. Zoot was the total opposite of that. He came from a context of love. So when he appreciated me via my body, he gave me a bridge from where I kept my real self into this world. It takes a long time to change how you feel about yourself. You need love for that. Well, Zoot gave me love, and it was a good kind of love. It was friendship, not ownership. We were friends. But as much as we were friends, he was still Zoot Sims. He was famous. He was 20 years older than me. And of course, he was married, too. He lived, and he worked, and he played in worlds so completely removed from where I lived. He even gave me his home phone number one time. So eventually, one time, he was away. And I did meet somebody, a real guy. And I started going out with him. And a whole lot of other changes started happening in my life. I moved out of Havelock Street into a housing co-op. I finished my massage therapy studies, opened up my own business. I was still taking care of my son, of course. I started singing in a choir. And the choir master eventually got me to sing solo you did a good job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I finally quit the therapy. And by the way, that abusive psychiatrist that, I, mm -hmm. that had slept with me, well, apparently he slept with a lot of other women patients too. And they all reported him, and he lost his license yeah. in Ontario. Yeah. Guess where he went? California. Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he went to California. Well, I often wonder what my life would have been like if I had got on that plane that day and gone down to Florida. I fantasize about it all the time. The first thing would be, I would have told Zoot how I felt about him, how much I loved him. In 1985, that spring, I started thinking about Zoot so much. It was the strangest thing, but he kept coming into my head coming into my head and I kept feeling like I gotta talk to him, I gotta contact him, I gotta tell him how I felt about him, how much he'd meant to me and how important he was. I started a couple of letters. And I even picked up the phone one time, but I chickened out. But then this boyfriend wanted to go to New York. And I thought, well, since there, I've still got his phone number. And another friend of mine had just been down there a couple of weeks prior and said Zoot had been performing at some club. I went, great, I'll follow him down there. So we got on the plane, flew down to New York, and we came back. Did I call Zoot? Yeah. Bad head. So there I was, back in Toronto, just a few days after I'd been in New York City. I turned on the radio. Hey, they're playing one of Zoot's songs. How oh, great. But then the song was finished. They played another one of the songs. 
went to another station and I heard Sid's music again. Oh. oh, you finally woke up, did you? Finally figured out something was wrong? Just a little late, you idiot. Of course something's wrong. Something's very wrong, and you know bloody well what it is. Zoot's dead. And you, you stupid, stupid thing. You missed your last chance. That hateful voice inside my head said it was right. I didn't listen to my heart. Suddenly, I started thinking, well, my heart was listening to Zoot's heart. Why I kept thinking about him so much. Zoot's heart was calling me. He was calling me because he knew he was dying. I didn't know that. He kept pulling me and pulling me. It even pulled me all the way down to New York City. So I was there just in the days before he died. Carl Jung, famous psychoanalyst, he would call that synchronicity. And there was a French philosopher, Pascal, who had a saying, Le cœur a ses raisons que la raison ne connaît point. The heart has its reasons, but reason knows nothing about it. Well, I didn't listen to my heart. I listened to the reasoning of my fears. And that was the worst day of my life. Zoot died. And I was totally unprepared for my own reaction. I had no idea that I was going to feel that death in my own heart. I couldn't do anything. I just cried and cried and cried. I couldn't function. I ended up just walking back and forth in my place and I put a record on. It was an LP that, that Zoot had given me actually before, just after he'd recorded it. But I suddenly heard Zoot's voice. And I thought, I thought I was really losing my mind. Zoot was singing on the last cut of that album. Zoot's death started a process in me. It took a lot of years, but it really was the beginning of my life as a Zoot case. And I was carrying this psychological case full of emotions and life and stuff that I wasn't getting out. I had to. I started finally to get it out through music. I realized that music could not only contain my emotions, it also released me. I love this song as time goes on. I've got a brand new lover. Twenty years later, I wrote that. Zoot was gone quite a few years. My son was grown up and gone. My boyfriend was gone. And I was by myself in this apartment over a store on Young Street. So I ended up writing this song. And finally, flying shadows, each passing car throws sunlight frisbees through the air. Photos jump out and let the past shout, and the life that was is there. But I wish I could see you again. jolted my heart, forced it open. So I went back to the very first spring when I'd met him originally, and I thought about all the things that I 
would say to them if I only could. Put them into a song. This is Havelock Street. In the springtime, when all is sweet and light, I think of you and how you came to me. So unexpected, but I knew that I'd found my heart. A gentle storm that swept along, a music man who moved his song. Springtime brings you back to me, sweet promises of love. finally realizing, in the sense of making real, what I had said intuitively at the very beginning when I said that Zoot was my heart. I recognized that his heart was a reflection of what my heart wanted to be. I was a long way from it. I had to work at it a lot. And a lot of times, the old negative habits would come back. So I needed something to inspire me, to bring me back to his humor and love and music and spirit. So I wrote this song. It's called True Blue. There were times when I was young. Well, some might say I was a little dumb. I felt like I was caged up in a zoo. I'd want the world to know. There was so much to explore. Such a wild array. Just do what you're told. Well, sometimes that seemed a 
very foolish thing to do. understand everything. You don't even have to be worthy of love. Just if love comes into your life, say thank you. Give it back. Live your love. Zoot lived his in his music. And through his example, I was able to find my music in life. I didn't speak it to him, though. Not face to face. And it's still hard sometimes not to hate myself for that. So I had to write another song to try and forgive that young person. This is called cycling. Wow. 
why didn't I see it? How come I never knew? Why didn't I tell you how much I loved you? Your heart sang a song then. It was telling me that you would be my lover. Now it's plain to see, but I was young and foolish. I never dreamed it true. You would need me in the least. Well, I didn't know you. I just let those moments wash away like rain, never understanding that they don't come again. I still ride my bike a lot. Sue told me one time, every time I see a bike, I think of you. And I think of him a lot now, but of course I only get to talk to him in my dreams where he does turn up every once in a while. And it's wonderful when he does it. He's just like he always was, very warm and witty and full of finesse. I wake up out of those dreams and I'm so happy. I just think it's 1976 all over again. <laughs> Until I look in the mirror. And that young girl is gone. But the heart lives on, right? And it's always a treat when he does turn up in those dreams. This next song that we're going to do, it's going to be our last one. It was describing one of those dreams. Before we do it, I want to say thank you to all of you for coming out and for letting me speak my heart in words and in music. I feel like I was very privileged to have known Zood and to have spent the time I did with him. And now I feel enormously privileged to know these gentlemen and to be able to spend time with them. Besides being amazing musicians, they're wonderful friends, wonderful people. Ron Johnson, the baby of our group. Ron Norma Madio, Norm was lucky enough to have played with, well, Norm played with everybody in the jazz world. Like, he, he's got a list this long, but he also played with Sue whenever he came to the city. And, yes, Norm Mario. And John Dehan on the saxophone. What's that? I drank with Sue. Oh, you drank, he drank with Sue. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the show, and I hope you can remember to be as kind and as generous in your lives as Zoot was in his. And if you do that, his spirit will live on. We're going to do this next song. It's called Appearing Tonight. Springtime brings you back to me Sweet 
promises of love How I wish that you were here Your melody so warm and clear I would tell you 